In this video, I'm going to share with you five superpowers that great leaders have and they use it every day. What's number one? Number one is the power of communication. Power of communication. They have mastered to communicate verbally in written form. They can connect with you and then they constantly practice themselves. You would have seen great leaders. They get on stage, they have regular team meetings and they practice the art of communication. You can never get it right, but you have to constantly practice. And you would have seen that all great leaders, they constantly practice communication. Communication that is persuasive, communication that is inspiring, communication that moves each and every one of us who's in the audience. So there is a huge power in amazing communication. So figuring out how we can communicate in the most persuasive, the most inspiring form, the energy that we bring when we communicate is also very important. So communication is a superpower. And last bit on communication is it's the heart and the mind. Great leaders, they talk to you, not just to your mind by giving you the data, giving you the analysis and all of that, the reasonings. They also talk to your heart. They connect with you deeply on the emotional side of why is it that's important? Why should you be spending you know, more than half of your waking hours in the office, doing the work on the mission that we are working on. Great leaders know how to connect the mission, the vision with your work. And they can connect why it's important. They can connect how it moves real people. So talking and communicating, not just to the mind, but also to the heart, is something that they have mastered through communication. So number one, communication, practice, practice, practice. Get better at it. It's a discipline and you never arrive at uh, being the best at communication, is what my professor told me. So communication, right? That's number one, superpower. Number two, deep conviction. What are you passionate about as a leader? What is it that you care about deeply, that you are convinced to the gut, you feel that this is where your time is going to be, this is where the team's focus should be. If you as a leader don't have clear communication and don't have clear conviction, it's very hard to be inspirational. So conviction with depth, strong belief, amazing passion, being an optimist, to being able to figure it out, right? That, that constant problem solving attitude, that positivity, that energy, that vision is needed when you have to have deep conviction. You have to have a vision that you believe in, that everything that you do is worth spending that time, not just yourself, but also your troops. So deep level of optimism, is highly needed and deep belief into the future of what you think is possible. Think about Steve Jobs. The first iPhone launched 2007 and look at right now, 2020. They're still iterating. The first one, the battery was so poor compared to the Nokia that I used to use at that time. I would laugh at those people. But what he showed us was the deep vision that there could be a phone with one button, that there could be a phone that is so simple, that is rich, that's interactive. It had a lot of defects. He did not focus on that. He had a deep conviction that there could be a phone that is very simple, that's amazing. And now look, even 10 years from now, we're improving, iterating on it, and everyone's using it. So it was Steve Jobs who had the deep conviction with the vision that he held. And so it's very important for us to, to find out for ourselves, for real, what is your deep conviction? What is it that you really, really believe in? 
there will be a lot of naysayers. There will be folks who would who would say why your plan is a terrible plan. Why would it never work? Happened to Steve Jobs for iPhone and for many other leaders. There were questions, but then they were able to, their deep conviction, communicate the vision, break it down into mission, you know, strategy, and break it down into roadmap, timelines, and a whole host of things, right? Very important, have deep conviction, power number two. Number three, intention. Leaders who are amazing, they work with intention. They just don't have meetings for the sake of meetings. Every single thing that you do, you need to have strong intention of why you're doing it. What do you want to get out of it? And you want to do it in a way that's not monotonous. If you're just having a regular team meeting and you're just, just going through, through the rhythm, right? And it's just like so boring, monotonous conversation. It's not going to be inspiring. You got to figure out how you make it fun. How do you make it engaging? How do you like get the people to be part of that conversation? Figuring out how you break out of that monotonous routine into something that's lively, something that's fun, something that's energetic, something that's inspiring is very important. So clear agenda, clear intention, and clarity of how you want to do it in a way that gets people to to be part of the conversation. So clear intention, power number three, clear intention. Work, do everything with clear intention. Number four, knowledge. This is the basis of any leader's ability to do anything. If you're not well read, if you really don't understand, let's say you are an engineer and you are an engineering executive, if you really don't understand your technology thing, you know, good luck. You're not going to have all of the amazing engineers to work with you. You really want to understand the technology. You really want to stretch it. But at the same time, you need to be well read. You need to understand different perspectives. You need to be able to comprehend. You need to build the competence so that you can come in resilient with the power of knowledge. So knowledge is a superpower. Do not just opt out. You may be, you and I, I'll give you a personal example. I opted out of social media, but I work for a social media company. I work for some other social media. Never mind. What I'm trying to say is opting out is not the solution. Figuring ways in which you can get information from every different perspective, from using every different things possible and getting involved, not opting out, is a superpower of knowledge. Then you can bring in perspectives, you can bring in um, ideas that are different and you can use it with the deep convictions that you have built over time. Number four, knowledge, superpower. And I think in one line, Steve Jobs, uh, in his commencement speech, said it, stay hungry, stay foolish, right? Stay hungry, stay foolish. That was pretty phenomenal, right? How do you yearn for more knowledge? How do you make sure that you're constantly learning and your knowledge is growing? and that you're open to new ideas, that's a superpower that every leader has, every great leader absolutely has. Number five, presence. Now, if you have the top four and if you don't have five, presence, it's gonna be very hard, right? Presence is just, when a leader walks in, you probably have noticed, a great leader, when he walks into the meeting, everyone just notices. He has that presence. He's fully there. He shows up and he's ready to engage. Clear intention, clear idea, and ready to act. And he's deeply connecting with every one of them, of the team members. Presence is how you come prepared. Are you even doing all the preparation needed to run the meeting? Are you doing everything needed to show up? If you show up, let's say as a leader, 
not shaven for like many days. I'm just I'm just picking on shaving as an example. Let's say for me. If I'm clean shaven most of the time, I better be clean shaven when I'm really presenting something that's important. Or whatever my demeanor is, am I doing the preparation? Am I reading the material? Am I getting everyone involved? Am I giving people enough time? Have I done everything to make this the best time for the folks who are involved? Remember, as a leader, you might be really tired on a specific day, on a specific hour. But then that meeting that you've called or that agenda that you had, all of those people really expect you to be at your 100%. Think about this. Let's say you go to a drama, right? You pay $100, $100, $200 for the ticket. Is it okay if the person who's presenting or doing the show, is it okay if they're just doing it, if they're just tired and still doing it? It's not okay, right? You want your 100, 100 bucks value. Similarly, when you show up, you've got to figure out how you pump up your energy how you stay centered, how you bring in your 100% so that everyone's involved feels your presence. Everyone involved feels that you are here to make an impact, that you are here to contribute, that you are fully there. You're not distracted checking your cell phone or not even paying attention, not really listening. Great leaders have deep presence. Presence, not just physically being there, but 100% listening to you, going beyond listening to your feelings as well, not just your words. Great leaders have amazing presence. They prepare well, they show up, and they choose to be present. And finally, they're highly aware. They can see through body language. They can make out when they're saying something, people are not engaged. They actually are looking. They are working at their peak potential. They come prepared, right? That's what presence is all about. So five superpowers. Conviction, no, communication first. Conviction, intention, knowledge, presence. Five superpowers. Each one of us as leaders need to work on each one of these so deliberately we need to figure out how every step of the way we're getting better and when we do that we become great leaders finally a few thoughts people don't leave companies people leave managers people leave leaders if you're a poor leader if you're a poor boss you don't deserve someone's time or their, you know, the contributions that they are, you know, doing at the cost of everything else that they could be doing. They could have a much better opportunity cost trade off at some other company where there is a much better boss with a much better vision to really have a much bigger impact. So it's very important for us as leaders to get better. It's very important for us as leaders to build all the superpowers that we can so that we can rally the troops, rally our people towards a mission that's very important for us to achieve. And do that with that empathy, do that with genuine kindness towards those people in your team members. Do you really care about them or is it just transactional? Do you really are in sync with what's going on, not just with them, but also with their family? Do you really understand their motivations? Are you really setting them up for success? If you're not, then you're not a great leader. Very important to remember, people don't leave managers. People leave, people don't leave companies, sorry. People leave managers. So we need to be great managers, great leaders. Finally, you're gonna be doing so much work every single day day by day, week by week, months on an important project, you want to make that time the best time ever for those people involved. Empower them. Make that time and that project so good, so good, 
They don't, they don't want to go anywhere else. They want to be just doing their project because they are, they're appreciated, they're celebrated, they love the work, you've given them the projects that, that they like, right? Make the work so good that they don't want to do anything else. You have to actually tell them, hey, stop working, you know, go, go home. Forget micromanage, it's extreme. You're empowering, like a mother. A mother will empower you for anything that you want, as long as it's good for you, right? So make work so good, they don't want to do anything else. Final thoughts for each of these leader leadership uh, powers, think about one role model. Think about one person in your life who actually has displayed each one of them. If you have a hard time, spend more time thinking, reflecting. Start with your mother. Start with your family members. Start with your bosses. Maybe one boss might not have each of these superpowers, but one person might have at least one of them. But if we spend the time to understand and develop these leadership powers, we're unstoppable. You're gonna be the best of the best. You're gonna inspire the greatness that's in each one of us to make this place a better place. We'll, we'll heal this world together. We will eliminate this, this thing called work-life balance. People would really work and they will feel balanced. They'll also be equally happy at home doing and taking care of their family, and they'll be happy. So happiness is the outcome of being a really great leader. And you and I, you and I can all be great leaders. Hope you found it useful. Thanks.